Yeah, a lot of people may be surprised by this because folks assume that they'll get a letter in the mail if a sex offender moves in down the street. Neighbors in Westlaco were shocked to find out that's not always true. People are out in this brush right now, marching for miles through dangerous terrain, risking their lives. They're driven by the dream of a new life. For many, that dream ends right here, alone in the brush. You see their logo all over the valley. Drink for the Cure is a new charity accepting donations for HIV and AIDS. You may think you're giving to a good cause. We found out this charity is deceiving donors. We've been driving these back roads all day and we've seen no law enforcement, no border patrol, no DPS. They don't patrol out here because they don't have the training to drive through the oil fields. It leaves a wide open door for smugglers who want to get their loads past the checkpoints in Felfield furious in Hebronville. No cameras were allowed inside the courtroom this afternoon, but I can tell you it was packed. A lot of family and friends of all six defendants were there waiting to see what happened. And again, as they found out, sentencing now pushed back to January 24th at 2 o'clock right here at the federal courthouse. The liquid inside these tanks is more flammable than jet fuel, and they're sitting less than 30 feet away from these burned oak trees from the last major wildfire here. The concern is that as the flames get too close, this could cause a major explosion. Tonight, so many unanswered questions in this this couple's disappearance. They boarded a bus in Mexico. They've been missing ever since. We've been getting calls about the New Life Bucket Brigade. They're back on street corners like this, collecting your cash. You might think twice about handing over your hard-earned money when you see what our investigation uncovered. Why are you guys walking away from us? Oh, get him, get him. New Life Church members know exactly what to do when our cameras start rolling. They tell you guys not to talk to reporters like me. Why do they do that? Why are you guys not willing to answer questions about your church? We spotted them at a busy McAllen intersection. Drivers like you dropping dollar after dollar into their buckets. Hey, look down the bucket. There's, there's money in there. This church member gets on her cell phone. There's this man over here. We're not harassing you, we just want to ask you some questions. A microphone in my face and a camera on me, all right? Minutes later, she's running across the street. Another church member follows, and so do we. They duck inside a fast food restaurant and try to sneak out the back door. A white van is waiting nearby. Excuse me. Can I ask you some questions? Excuse me. We trace the plate numbers to a San Antonio address at a church we've been investigating since 2004. New Life Ministries in San Antonio is a spin-off of the Deeper Life Christian Church in Tampa, Florida. It is not the fault of Pastor Jefferson. It is not the fault of it. It's your fault. Their leader is Melvin Jefferson, who calls himself wow. Bishop. Did he just make himself a bishop? Does he have any formal training? Well, he's, uh, he's self-trained. That's attorney Dennis Brewer in a 2008 interview with Channel 5 News. He represents a ministry accused of being a money machine. Rick Ross runs a church watchdog group. The ministry is using homeless people, the most vulnerable people in our country, to raise money on street corners. Deeper Life recruits homeless people from the streets and moves them into substandard housing owned by the church. In San Antonio, we found holes in the walls, exposed wiring, trash everywhere. To pay their way, church members have to go on fundraising trips to places like the Valley. The money in the buckets goes back to the main church in Florida. The bishop and his wife live in luxury. They have a mansion, drive at least five cars, including a Bentley, and fly in a private jet. I'm sure that uh, there are critics out there. There are probably more out there that wish that he had a better lifestyle. Some have compared his church to a cult. I can care less what you heard or what you think, okay? I'm not the one to speak to you on this, What okay? can you tell me? They won't answer our questions. They will be back with their buckets asking for your money. We called Deeper Life for comment today. We're still waiting for a call back. As long as this church keeps coming to the Valley, we'll keep working to get answers. Will Ripley, Channel 5 News at 10. This will be the Davila family's first Christmas without a home. They lost most of their possessions, but say they gained something far more valuable. The front of their house looks untouched. Opening the door reveals the devastation. Fire destroyed the roof. The second floor collapsed. 
I don't know. It's, it's been a lot. It's hard. Betsy Davila's hard times began six months ago. Flames ripped through her house in minutes. The fire marshal is still investigating the cause. So this one, I grab this one, I take... Davila cooks for her family on a hot plate. She plugs in outside. They have no electricity, so they run an extension cord from their neighbor's house. They built a small outhouse, but have to borrow their neighbor's shower. The kids sleep in this travel trailer. The parents in a raspa stand in the front yard. Like many families in this colonia, the Davilas built this entire house themselves. They saved their money and put it together piece by piece. Burned wood, twisted metal are all that's left. <laughs> I look around and I'm like, where's my hard work? Davila says she and her husband try to be strong, saving what money they can from his job as a custodian, hers as a home health provider. With no insurance, they're struggling. My son said, Mom, what do you want to celebrate Christmas for? There's nothing to celebrate. And I told him, we hope there is. We're alive. In that spirit, the family put up a donated Christmas tree on the front porch, a symbol of this family's strength, faith, and love. That trailer and Raspastan get pretty cold at night. Family members don't even have coats to keep warm. They're hoping things will get better in the new year. Reporting live, Will Ripley, Channel 5 News at 6. Yeah, up and down the border, we're really seeing the same thing. Mexican towns that used to be so full of life, they're now on life support. The doors to your favorite pharmacy, nightclub, or restaurant may not be open the next time you visit Nuevo Progreso. Everywhere you look, folks are going out of business. No hay carros, no hay turistas. No hay turistas, no hay carros. Nada. <laughs> no cars to fill these spaces. Streets are empty. Businesses are broke. Everyone is suffering. The, f the pharmacies up front, down the bottom, everybody in a hole is suffering. Marie Moises' pharmacy is just about the only business still open in this plaza. She I says life hasn't been this hard since her childhood growing up in Haiti. We're hoping for better. Locals tell us about half the businesses around here have closed their doors just in the past year. And many others are worried they won't survive the season if the tourists don't come. I mean, we don't have any... And the tourism whatsoever. The Mexican Navy began patrolling these streets about a month ago as part of a troop surge along the border. Hilda <inaudible> Barbosa is afraid of what could happen if and when the troops go home. Do you worry about that? I do. I do, and I pray they don't. Almost one year after a deadly shooting during a street festival here, Barbosa says winter Texans are slowly coming back. It is starting to pick up, but just like a couple of weeks ago, this seemed like a ghost town. Do you feel safe here in Mexico? Not really. Winter Texans like Ruben Torres still cross into Nuevo Progreso. The question is, for how long? Next week marks the one-year anniversary of that shooting during a Winter Texan festival in Nuevo Progreso. No Americans were hurt, but the town's image as a safe haven took a big hit. They're still trying to recover. Reporting live, Will Ripley, Channel 5 News at 6. These are documents you were never supposed to see. State Department cables off limits to anyone outside the U.S. government. We found them on the website WikiLeaks. They have a list of high value targets, including right here in the valley. Terrorists could use it as a blueprint of where to attack. This cable is classified secret. It reveals the locations of critical infrastructure whose loss could critically impact the national and homeland security of the United States. In other words, potential terrorist targets leaked online, now in the hands of anyone with a computer. That has now a, a blueprint or map of how we view the uh, high value targets around the world. Fred Burton is a counterterrorism expert and vice president of Stratfor in Austin. He and his team reviewed this cable, listing the top places to target the U.S. Locations around here include ports of entry in Far and Brownsville, the Amistad Dam near Del Rio, Anzaldúas Dam south of Mission, Retamal Dam near Wesleco, and Falcon Dam upriver from Roma. We told you this summer about a suspected plot by the Zetas to blow up Falcon Dam. Chief Meteorologist Tim Smith says that would cause... Just devastating flooding. So if they did it at midnight last night, by 6 o'clock tonight, we would have water in the mall in McAllen. 
The International Boundary and Water Commission won't comment, citing sensitive security issues. Fred Burton with Stratfor told us valley dams are unlikely targets. It would be extraordinarily difficult to, to be able to pull off that kind of attack. Burton also points out these locations are listed as potential targets. It does not mean anyone's planning an actual attack. It makes me ask a lot of questions. How do they get these documents or who are the people like giving these documents out? It does make me feel uneasy. Why is that? Well, I like to feel safe down here, and when there's uh, uh, secure information being passed like that, I don't think it's, uh, no, I, I think it's wrong. A homeland security leak hitting too close to home. Some feel WikiLeaks is trying to attack the United States by releasing classified information like this. More than 95% of the site's documents are specifically about the U.S. Will Ripley, Channel 5 News at 10. The scam begins as a letter or email recruiting you to become a secret shopper for the holidays. What sounds like quick Christmas cash could leave you with nothing but coal in your stocking. Tis the season for holiday scams. Your total is I think that's ridiculous and people need to be careful. Christina Ramirez got these emails offering her a job as a mystery shopper. They're trying to get me to cash a fake check basically for over two grand and uh, wire them the money to a Western Union location. It's a bad idea. Dolores Salinas with the Better Business Bureau says it's a good thing she never cashed that fake check. Ten days from now, your bank's going to come looking for you and you're responsible. The BBB's already gotten half a dozen calls about this scam. Five on your side is also investigating several complaints. Why now? It's just at this time of the year, people are going to be more gullible. They're going to have their guard down. Seen as the holidays, a lot of people are interested in money. Ramirez wants you to watch out. I would tell people to be really, really careful. Um, anything that you get that sounds too good to be true, more than likely it is going to be too good to be true. She says don't fall for these Christmas con artists or you could end up being ho ho hosed. If a secret shopper company contacts you, remember, never wire money to anyone. Ask lots of questions. You could also check out the company. We have a link to the Better Business Bureau. It's on krgv.com. Will Ripley, five on your side. The information coming in right now about these brand new suspects. The Zapata County Sheriff says they shot and killed David Hartley on Falcon Lake and even had the green light to kill his wife before she escaped. The Zapata County Sheriff says this now makes four suspects in the Falcon Lake murder case. A Mexican investigator identified two brothers back in October and turned up dead days later. Sheriff Gonzalez says he's been trying to call his counterparts in Mexico with this new information. They haven't called him back. 22 minutes. That's how long a Donna mom claims her daughter sat inside the school nurse's office dealing with severe chest pain. Cameron County Sheriff's deputies say they stopped an armed drug convoy. Four vehicles were seized. Three accused drug runners are in custody. ICE agents are spearheading this investigation. Court records show one man reported earning $400 to escort the load. Agents seized more than 200 kilos of marijuana. Deputies found the drugs under a blanket. Authorities also found three loaded semi-automatic weapons. Now the latest on a story we continue to follow for you. More delays surrounding the announcement of who will be the next Cameron County judge. Channel 5 News has learned a wording error on the county agenda is just the latest in many setbacks. Officials wrote a section of the law on the agenda dealing with state elections. Families with children being treated at Valley Baptist Medical Center in Harlingen now have a home away from home. It's right inside the hospital where those families spent so much of their time. World News is next. We'll see you back here on Channel 5 News at 6. Take care.